Let's go to a, uh, some Shenango slides uh, next. And I'll, I'll start that off, and then Nelson will follow me, Nelson Craig, and then we'll turn it over to Dean DeLuca. So uh, when Steve Guzzi was general or plant manager of Shenango, when DTE Energy first bought the facility a few years back, uh, I saw this poster on the wall of the conference room, and I was impressed with it. I said, wow, that, that's really great, some nice, uh, uh, ideas about how their, uh, what their standards are, what their mission statements are, and showing uh, workers in their gear, uh, I'm not sure if you want to call them hazmat suits, but they're very protective clothing that needs to withstand, I guess, 130 degrees F at times. And they're required to wear respirators, and they're required to wear facial gear to protect themselves uh, from the environments of a coke plant. Uh, so I admire people who are willing to put up with that kind of work and risk their livelihood, in my opinion. I had uh, two, uh, three uncles who worked at JNL Steel and Aliquippa uh, in the hot end of the steel mill, and uh, it was interesting work uh, for them, okay? Uh, and just a little side effect, they well, on the night shift, they would go to the local bar and have a shot and a beer to clear their throats in the morning. <laughs> I don't know if that's still done. <laughs> uh, so that was my, I, my introduction to what it's like to work in a heavy duty industrial facility. It's an old plant, it's 52 years old. Uh, the new owners promised us a lot that they would clean up the act versus the old owner, uh, locally owned. And those of us in the community don't feel that yet. Uh, we still think there, there are a lot of upsets. Uh, I can recall the time when a squirrel or a bird got into the uh, transformer area our distribution center closed down the whole plant. And this great big brown, brown cloud rose up over the plant, and I consider that to be combustible gas, and I was considering going north towards Cranberry. <clears throat> okay, so that's the type of thing we see. We think it's a dangerous place. Those of us in the community, we smell the smells, and uh, that's why we're having this meeting. So here are the products are still, so this was given to me by Steve Gutting, who was the plant manager at the time, so it's it's information from Shenango. So, products and sales, Severstall, that's the customer that uh, Shenango has in Detroit. Uh, they're a steel plant. They take glass furnace coke. Uh, and for what it's worth, they're owned by the Russians. So, Severstall is a Russian owned steel mill. It's in the River, what is it, the River Rouge plant that was once a Ford facility. Uh, Bogner takes buckwheat and breeze coke. That's for making metallurgical coal. Uh, Bogner is a, I believe it's an Allegheny County company, making metallurgical steel. Copper takes coal tar, and if you resealed your dry very recently, you get that kind of a smell. And that's a smell that we get a lot in our communities. Uh, it's called tar making. I smell it in my house a lot. Okay? Uh, light oil goes to Sitco. Uh, ammonium sulfate goes to Wilson Industries. I'm not sure who they are. Uh, steam from to Ashton and Calgon, so there's a lot of heat created uh, when the coke is quenched, and that steam gets sold off to other industries on the island. So they're doing other things besides making coke. Okay? And finally, at least in 2012, this full employment was 148, and maybe around that now, I'm not sure. And of that, 125 are island workers represented by the U.S. state workers. Okay? On to the next. Okay, now I'm going to introduce Nelson Craig, uh, who he was responsible for putting the placards around the room, and these are his slides. He knows them best. So I'll turn it over to Nelson. So she go to that. So let me add my thanks, uh, Karen and team, for being here. It's really special that you're here. And for the representatives of our elected representatives, thank you. And we're glad the Shenango crew's here, too. Um, <laughs> And most of all, thanks for everyone in the room being here. Uh, the point of this meeting is to hear from you. What I'm going to do over the next few minutes is give you a little bit of background on air quality in, uh, in our county and the impact of the Shenango plant on the immediate vicinity in this area. One of the things that, that we on the ACAN uh, group believe in is uh, to be unemotional and fact-based about what we present. Every single slide you'll see Everything around the room has a citation. It's fact-based. There's no emotion to it. It is what it is. 
It's scary. Some of the stuff is really scary. When my wife and Carol and I moved here 30 years ago, I'm not sure I would have moved here had I known what I'm about to show you. This is really scary stuff. Uh, my name is Nelson Craig. I'm a 30-year resident of uh, Ben Avon, and uh, I like to say I've been marinating in this air for 30 years, and I've just about had it. So with that, uh, the first slide talks about air quality in general in Pittsburgh. And as you can see, we have terrible air in this area. And this is based on, like that, I think it's just going to be easier for me to stand out here. This is from the Heinz Endowments, and uh, we've got the air that's equivalent to the five worst cities for year-round short-term particulate air pollution in the United States. And that kind of rose. Okay, that works better. So uh, that haze you see in the lower left is not a pretty rose-colored sky. That's air pollution. And we sure don't want to be in a place where our kids are wearing air masks, gas masks. They could be today. And we all cough, we all feel. I don't know if you experience this. When folks come to visit us, they get out of the car, they open the door, and they say, what's that smell? All the time it happens. There's a lot of nods in the room. Thanks, Ted. So go ahead, Tom. So air quality does matter. This fact blew me away. Particulate air pollution kills more people in the United States every year than breast cancer, prostate cancer, and AIDS. What we're here to talk about matters. Next. Allegheny County ranks 63rd out of 3,225 counties in the United States. We're the worst 2% worst two percent. You'll hear a lot of great numbers about how we've improved. We've kind of improved from an F minus to an F. And I don't know about your parents, but my parents weren't happy with that kind of improvement. And the, and the folks from the County Health Department agree with us. We're not good enough yet. We've got a long ways to go. But. So a little closer to home, uh, Bellevue, Avalon, and Brighton Heights, uh, the three communities that that go up river toward, down river towards the uh, city are cancer hotspots. This slide uh, shows uh, the, in, in the darkest red color the cancer hotspots hot that are downwind from us right here. Next slide. And Shenango Coke Works is the issue in our part of Allegheny County. Uh, for example, uh, that plant had 330 violations over a 430-day period ending in September of last year. It's been subject to five consent decrees. The most recent was actually not 13, it was this year. And this year's fine was only $300,000. That's equivalent to two days sales from that plant. It was nothing. Shenango is in the worst possible place. Look at where the prevailing wind blows from Shenango, over our communities, over the city, coincidentally, right towards the county health department offices. <laughs> Next. And the plant is a very heavy polluter. You know, when you see slides like this one over here, that's steam. Not so bad. This is what is also accompanying that steam. Look at these numbers, 21 tons of fine particulates, 376 tons of nitrous oxides, et cetera. I'll point you down to VOCs, volatile organic compounds, things like benzene. 93 tons of that stuff is put into the air by that plant every year. The health impact of VOCs, cancer. The health impact of fine particulates up at the top, asthma. Northgate School District, the worst school district for asthma in the state of Pennsylvania. I wonder why. Next. The communities downwind from Shenango are at risk. Read the quote from Father Bernowski at the Assumption Church up in Bellevue. Just read that and absorb what that says. 
I see more and more of my parishioners who never smoked dying of lung cancer, said Father Bernowski, who signed the letter for his parish. I probably bury, bury 65 people a year due to cancer and lung disease. The numbers down below, um, this is from the, the Post-Gazette's Mapping Mortality series, and I'll just refer you to the 46% in the upper left corner of the, uh, of the matrix there. Uh, in Bellevue, that's the column, in the first row, respiratory disease, that means that folks in Bellevue are 46% more, more likely than the average person to die, not just to have respiratory disease, but to die from respiratory disease. Avalon, McKees Rocks, Pittsburgh. There's the pattern. Next slide. There's also an environmental justice uh, issue here, and environmental justice refers to the fact that um, air pollution uh, affects the poorest among us. This slide in red and gold highlights the, uh, the poorest communities in our areas. And you can see that north side, uh, down on the east side of the city, down into the valley are all particularly impacted by, in this case, we just picked out black carbon, but the others are the same. So uh, we promised to be brief. I think the next slide is the last slide. You know, our conversations as, as uh, citizens, and that's all we are as citizens, um, is, have only de deepened our belief that um, a community's quality of life is impacted, uh, but if the exposures, the numbers, don't fall within the accepted range for specific legal action, consideration should still be given to cleaning up our air. It's not about numbers, it's about our air, it's about what we all breathe. 